Hello. Well, today I'm gonna keep going with the uh, <coughs> Humphrey Bogart and Laura McCall uh, movies uh, that they did together uh, with uh, The Big Sleep, which was the next film they did. Um, this uh, is more like a, a film noir compared to the uh, To Have and Have Not. <clears throat> um, in short, the film is about a private uh, private eye who is hired by a former general, uh, uh, wondering about uh, it, like his youngest daughter being blackmailed um, because she's uh, known to gamble quite a bit as well as have a lot of debts. Basically, uh, uh, because of this, just uh, uh, <clears throat> this initial uh, Bogart, like Philip Marlowe, uh, <clears throat> it just ravels into a big conspiracy of murder and um, just, it's just one of those films that's just very... Like, you know, like many film noir movies, uh, it goes from one simple thing to unraveling a huge kind of like conspiracy, which, you know, is just like, makes you wonder, like, it began here, and then it ends here, and then just keeps going, and it's just a mess. Um, Lauren Bacall, um, plays one of the general's daughters, uh, Vivian, her younger sister, uh, uh, Cameron, played by Martha Vick Vickers. Um, uh, this is a very, you know, very good film. Um, I had seen this before, many years ago, like on TV, a couple times, and, um, it was really entertaining, uh, you know, every time I've watched it. And, um, and this Blu-ray has a 1945 uh, version of the film, which is, you know, has 20 minutes of different footage at different places. It's two minutes longer than the theatrical cut that everybody saw in 46. And, um, you know, this is based off of a book by... Uh, Raymond Chandler and it's also directed by Howard Hawks who also directed to Have and Have Not um, uh, from everything I've seen about the making of the film beyond like the, here with the comparisons of the theatrical cut and the original cut and what was removed and scenes are reshot and everything as well as what I've heard about the book there's quite a lot of things in the book that make things more clear than you know uh, uh, than the film does mainly due to the uh, like the Hayes Code and how certain things that were in the film or in the book could not at all be in the movie because like there's like a subplot of like homosexuality which of course in the 40s that was a no no you could never have anything like that even remotely hinted at uh, so in the film uh, yeah it's It's just one of those things that this whole thing gets completely lost. And so it, maybe at certain points, especially in the last third of the movie, like the last act, things get to a point where it's just kind of like, you know, it does make sense to a good degree, but considering the fact that many things were removed, it's just 
very much, uh, it doesn't really make sense. Uh, completely, at least, you know, they make do with what they have with the film, you know, having to make the cuts necessary to appease the whole Hayes Code thing. Having certain scenes uh, reshot to try and make sense of things, and yeah. And I know I'm being very vague, but I do know that, you know, there are people who watch my stuff who may never have seen this movie. And so that probably annoys a lot of people. I'm incredibly vague on certain movies like this that is very old, you know, 46, 1946. Um, which, well, might not be very old, but, but but some people might see it that way because, you know, people, many people these days do not watch black and white movies because they're in black and white. And why bother doing that? Uh, you have color, so don't watch a show or a movie in black and white, you know. If a movie uh, is made today and purposely in black and white, you know, don't do that. <laughs> it's not in color. But uh, the chemistry of Humphrey Bogart and Laura Bacall is really good. You know, it was it was good in the previous film they did, and to have and have not, and it's still good here. It's interesting how pretty much almost every woman Humphrey Bogart comes across, there's some sort of flirtation. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's interesting to see how this sort of, uh, becomes like a running thing, uh, throughout this film. Uh, and not long after this film wrapped, and was released uh, they uh, uh, Lauren Bacall and Humphrey Bogart got married which you know they had kind of having a, a thing behind the scenes here and there when they were making it but you know Humphrey Bogart was trying to uh, keep things together with his uh, wife at the time but things just fell apart and they divorced um, afterwards these two got married once the divorce was finalized and uh, they did a couple more films which I will talk about in the coming weeks but uh, but yeah the big sleep is one that I think this is the first uh, Bogart and Bacall film I actually watched um, I watched a have and have not like sometime afterwards and um it's really cool uh to go back and rewatch these films uh uh like in order uh, from when they what which ones were made first and all that so of course they only made four but still uh, I really love uh, the chemistry between these two and the plot is quite interesting you know and here on the back you know this uh, says you know this uh, there's a blackmail case and follows a trail of people with murderers pornographers nightclub rogues spoiled rich and more yeah some of that stuff actually had to be removed you know it might be hinted at but you know at the same time cannot be outright said or shown like perhaps in the book um it's always interesting how you can uh even back then you could do a lot in a book but if you were to adapt it into a film at the at the time of the 40s and 30s and even the 50s you really had to censor what was going on, you know. And, uh, the '60s was around the time where, you know, books that would be turned into films such as this, you could then begin to really uh, adapt it more faithfully. You know, censorship wasn't as 
strict by that point. Though, of course, in the 60s, they did have uh, the rating system uh, come about, uh, the MPAA. But um, uh, at this point, you know, such rating systems didn't exist. It was just the Hayes Code, which, you know, is one of those things. Like, you, you look at the Hayes Code, and it's like uh, you, I understand why it's there. You know, they want to... <clears throat> make sure the movies that are being made and all that are obviously good and they don't have anything overtly degenerate or whatever would be seen as such uh, back in those days. But even then, you know, some stuff like in uh, films like this, certain things get cut out uh, because of, you know, certain ta either taboos or things that would be just too... You know, just too much in the in the days of the forties and the thirties and fifties. Uh, you know, it's like you know uh, stuff like the Hayes Code existed, where on one hand you can see there was a positive that was meant to uh, be enforced with these films, but at the same time, you know. Sometimes things had to be changed, sometimes very creatively. I think some of the cr ch changes from everything that was, you know, you can see as well as hear about the about this film, are kind of interesting how they get around some of that stuff so they can try to do what they can to imply or hint at certain things that were in the book that would be seen as a bit taboo or, you know, too much in those days, but at the same time, sometimes it's kind of like, you know, it's just kind of a, a bit much at times, like, because then some of the stuff they have to, you know, write and film or reshoot, because what they shot initially might be like, okay, you can't have this or that or whatever, so they have to redo scenes have things different that way uh, the censors of the time are f fine with the film you know it's not a uh, horrible or a major deal at that point it's like okay this is fine and passable um, but I glad I am glad that the 1945 uh, like pre-release I believe is what it is called, uh, the alternate version. Yeah, the pre-release. I'm glad that exists here, so that way people can view it and see what was the initial film uh, before they had to have reshoots and it being re-edited at parts. Um, some things make sense. Some things, you know, kind of make you take a step back and like, okay, what? Uh, especially near the end with this whole like, conspiracy and murder and stuff. And when it was like, like, now who did this and who enacted that? Because like, it, it makes a sort of sense in the final ver version of the thea original, like the theatrical cut, whereas the intention, the actual intention isn't completely there. It sort of gets lost. And it's interesting how, you know, to see these versions and just to see what is and isn't uh, included in the original theatrical cut um, and I say original theatrical cut because you know the 45 version wasn't shown until 1997 so to a lot of people the 45 uh, version is new or newer at least and uh, yeah it's it's just a very good film honestly this is a movie that 
you know, I could talk a lot about, and um, honestly, the uh, all the actors and actresses in this did an, an incredible job. The plot is uh, quite something. It's just, you know, it's supposed to be go, do, go from just uh, one thing which seemed to be quite simple of a whole blackmail thing going on to try and get people to stop blackmailing the man's daughter to then this whole murder mystery conspiracy thing and talking to some of the police about it and just yeah all this all this stuff going on it's just quite it's 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 quite the uh you know it's quite the uh uh, unraveling of a, of a series of events that culminates to the climax and the finale. Um, but yeah, I really enjoyed this film. Um, I know I'm, again, vague. Apologies, but uh, I do know there's a decent amount of people who haven't seen stuff like this, and I recommend to check it out you know either get the blu-ray which i don't believe would be that expensive these days um or if you can find it streaming somewhere you know this is a warner brothers film so if you have hbo max it might be there um of course you gotta guess you google and see if this is streaming anywhere uh that way you know you don't have to just try to go through whatever streaming services that you might have to search for a film and see if it's there or not um but again i think the blu-ray would be worth having you know especially just to see both cuts because um, uh, you might just get the theatrical cut um which is not at all bad it is a very good film though it is nice to see the 1945 pre-release version just to see what, at one point, it was sort of like intended to be shown, but then, you know, reshoots had to happen. Um, yeah. And that's, uh, that's really all I have. I hope all of you are doing well. Uh, I hope all of you are having a, you know, a, a, had a great week. Hope you're all having a great day and you'll have a great weekend and I'll see you all next time. Take care.